thank you, uh, CC, for the introduction. So, Beacon Chain is the core chain of the Ethereum 2.0. And today I'm going to talk about the life cycle of the Beacon Chain validator. So, first of all, just a quick recap of um, where we are right now. Serenity design for Ethereum 2.0. You can see that there will be four layers. So on the top of it is the Ethereum 1.0 uh, proof of work chain that we are using right now. And then is the beacon chain that uh, I'm going to focus in today. The beacon chain will provide the proof of stake, and also it will be the random number generator. And um, you can see that uh, the shard chain is. Uh, Above, under the big chain, we are designing like for uh, like 1,024 shards chains will be there, and um, so please note it that um, those shards chains are only for data layer. They don't um, have a in um, uh, in protocol uh, state execution right now, and then we will add the state execution engine on the shard chains. Now this is the whole picture that you can know, uh, have a good uh, overview of it. And so today I'm going to uh, focus in on the beacon chain. Um, so uh, here's the roadmap overview that you can see. Um, this is a simplified um, roadmap. So we are still at here, the phase zero. So the, the um, the for phase zero, everything we're focusing on is uh, the beacon chain design and the implementation, and the shard chain will be in the phase one, and the shard chain could be used uh, utilized for layer two, which Vitalik will talk about that uh, later, and then um, for the phase two, uh, the shard execution uh, shard state execution engine will be introduced there and also the cross-charge transitions. And after the phase two, we um, assume that the base protocol will be fine and usable. And then we can do more iterations on the, um, on the E2O charge chains. There are some iterations idea, for example, like Casper CBC and uh, make a stock uh, friendly system. So um, that, so let's talk about the beacon chain. So um, to introduce the beacon chain validator, the first question here is that why we, we want to be a validator? So of course there will be some reward to trigger you to um, join. So um, the first um, uh, RBVers reward here is the black proposer reward. So um, it's something like um, in the East 1.0 chain as a miner, you can include more transaction and the transaction fee will be given to the miners. And then in the, uh, in the proof of stake chains, um, there are, uh, the validators are also be um, incentive to include more validators votes and the transactions. Oh, sorry, and the transfers. Um, um, we call that the votes are the attestations. So attestation is a data structure that um, point out that what does, um, what did the validator vote for? And so it includes the signatures that the validator attest so to, um, to tell others that which transaction or which Beacon chain is the uh, value chain they think it is. And there's also transfers. 
Um, also for the black proposer, we have a spatial reward called the uh, uh, whistle blowing. It's like um, you can report others, others are malicious predators. If you, they did something very evil, bad, and you can report them, tell them that everyone that like, oh, hey, this is a bad one, bad guy, let's punish her or she. And then, then um, you will get his um, stash, uh, stash uh, ether to be your reward. And then there are the Casper FFG rewards. The Casper FFG reward is, um, is the reward for um, to reward that if you are voting on the correct um, beacon chain. So um, by the correct that, um, I mean the uh, canonical chain. So if you, I am a validator, I saw, uh, I see two, two shard chains, uh, so, sorry, two beacon chains. They are both uh, valid uh, in, if you see that independently. But you will, you will need to vote on the, the one that will be more likely to be the canonical chain by the, uh, to be accepted by the whole internet. Yeah. And the last one is the uh, cross-link reward. So the cross-link is a data structure that we use for um, in this web lab. You vote for some specific uh, so um, I will talk about that later. That like one way later, they will be um, responsible for um, responsible for uh, testing one shot. So they will need to uh, make the cross link reward uh, re cross link. And if that shot chain is really the canonical chain, they will get reward for that. And then the second question is that how to become a validator? Okay, then let's see that well, first of it, um, how to join the staking. Um, there is a deposit contract on the Ethereum 1 con um, chain. The user can uh, make a transaction to make a deposit of 23 Ethers on the contract. So, and then um, this uh, 20, uh, sorry, 32 users will be locked in the contract. And every time there is a new deposit being made, um, there will be a, a log event that will be on the is one chain receipt. As a beacon chain validator, they would need to uh, keep track of the state of the is one uh, chain contract. So, um, and especially watch the event log uh, of the deposit contract. You can use some uh, is one like client to keep track on that. So, okay, so um, here I am, I make a deposit, and then I will, um, the beacon chain validator, they will, we will check if um, this validator has already uh, made a deposit of enough um, enough balance on the on the beacon chain, and then they can't be added immediately. They have to wait for like for like twenty five minutes, and then we call that hey, this validator is activate uh, active right now. Then let's talk about the shoveling. So um, once the validator um, being being added into a big, large uh, validator list, then um, and then got if after they got activated, um, they will be shoveled into several small uh, committees. So uh, please note that um, the whole system will have only one big validator list. And they will got shoveling this uh, pseudo randomly sampled but to different communities. And um, each communities are 
which committees is assigned to be responsible for verifying one uh, certain transaction. And it's for one certain um, block or slot in the spec is uh, respective. And okay, so now imagine that you have already be a validator. And what would you, what should you do um, to gain some more incentive, uh, yeah, some more reward? So there are two uh, main responsibilities for the validators. The first one is uh, proposing a valid block. So um, you can see that the right, this, this here is the uh, data structure of the beacon block and beacon block body. So um, there is uh, something, um, the most interesting thing here, I think it's the render review and the uh, is one data here. So the render review is that, uh, so every validator, when it's their time to make, a, to propose a block, they have to review their render. Um, it, it's a hash value that will be uh, contribute to uh, provide the entropy to generate the seed. And then the protocol use that seed to generate the random numbers. So that's how the um, is one uh, is two random number generation um, being executed. And also they have to choose the best world of the is one chain uh, references from um, give a uh, is one data data structure on, in their uh, proposal. And another uh, important job for the validators is creating the attestations. So um, you can see the attestations like votes, I think it's uh, easier to understand. Um, a validator has to vote for um, what the current view of the chain in their client side. There are three um, different chains that uh, one validator has to um, know about. So first is the is one is one uh, work chain. They can use the light client to uh, to know the current head of the is one chain. And the second one is the uh, beacon chain. And as I said that. Uh, Every um, validators, every active validators, they are um, responsible to attest the chain. So they also have to vote for the chain here, and that um, that message will call that crosslink. Okay. So uh, I talk about the rewards. But also there are also the penalties and slashes that trigger the validators to be honest. Because if they do something bad, they will get slashed, they will get uh, punished by uh, reduce their balance. So the first thing um, is that the Casper F drip penalized. So. Uh, we talk about that um, the the one that contributed to the penalizations will be rewarded. Um, also, if you are not voted, you are not contributing to the uh, but to the penalization, they will get punished by reduce the by reducing their balance here. And if if the beacon block are not being finalized normally. That means that they will probably, um, the last finalized epoch will be very long time ago. Then there will be a penalized we call inactive penalized. So that will be applied to the validators um, because they didn't do their job well.
And also the crossing pin lines are the, um, the um, reflective of the Shanxuan plot. And there are two types of the slashing messages here. Um, there are the proposal slashing and the tester slashing. So um, since one validators, um, when after they sent their attestations, the attestation is in, uh, includes their own signatures. So they have to be responsible for that certain message what they attested, what they claim that that is real. And if they claim that they claim that it's real, but actually are not, they will be reported by the session messages. So the other users, they can uh, create the session message to um, <coughs> report that, hey, this user is not, do, not good. He voted for two, um, two shashins uh, in the same time. And then, it, so in that case, they will get punished too. And um, in the phase one, we will introduce the uh, proof of custody game penalized. So the, um, it is kind of uh, kind of the challenge and response game that, um, for example, is for solving for reduce the data availability problems. So for example. Um, because in the Shachan, there will be only the data. There are no um, certain state route in the Shachan. So if I claim that I have this uh, value, I have the um, data of this shot block, but actually I don't have. And then you will ask, do you? Um, the other uh, guy will ask, do I have the shot block? They will challenge me. And I, as a uh, prover, I have to prove that I really have that. So that's the proof of custody game that here. So if I don't have, but I lied, then I will got uh, punished too. Okay, and then as uh, something called the validator charm, for one uh, validators, they can't just join or leave the um, you can chat immediately. There are two waiting queues here. One is the activation queue, and another is the exit queue. The reason why it is here is for the stability and the light chain likeness. So we can't um, we can accept that one of the validator list the commit is being changed so frequently. So um. So. The, uh, each time when the validator, um, the validator updates, uh, registry update happens, the validator that can could be activated or deactive is based on uh, this um, formula, which is based on the total balance. So not every validator can live as soon as possible. So. If I want to leave, I have to create a voluntary exit message and send it to the uh, broadcast to the internet. And um, I uh, I also can't be leave immediately. I have to uh, become I have to withdraw my balance, right? So, but in the phase zero, there will be a state called the withdrawable state. So because that's because that the uh, Shachan exclusions, uh, Shachan state exclusion is not here yet. So in phase two, when we add the state exclusion engine, the withdrawable will be withdrawn to the Shachan. And then uh, let's see the life cycle of the validators. So, um, I was here, I am activated. And then um, this, this red, um, the slashing message means that I got slashed. And then I have to wait for 25 minutes to be exit. And then uh, if, since I am 
I was snatched and I and want to withdraw my money. Um, in that case, I have to wait for 36 days, then I can withdraw. And for the case that um, if I got um, uh, penalized over and over time, my balance uh, was 32 ether, but now it's only 16 ether. So my, if I don't have enough balance, I will also be kicked out. Uh, that would call the objection. And in that case, I will wait for 25 minutes and I'm going to a state called on slash and excuse. In that case, I have to wait for 27 hours. And note that uh, there's a first in, first in, first out queue here. That means the, uh, the waiting queue. And then I have to wait for another 27 hours. Then I'm being the withdrawable state. And the last case is that by just when um, I want to leave, Not, no one slashed me. In that case, um, I can send the message to the network and saying if uh, after I'm ready to exit, I only have to wait for uh, 25 minutes and then being in the same state. Oh, and um, when I am activated, I can't leave. I just joined the the uh, validators um, pool. I can't immediately leave. I only also have to wait for nine days. So um, the whole design is for the stability of the um, network. Oh, and um, there are some known computations and network requirements here. The first thing is that um, right now we are targeting on the worst case is uh, 4 million validators. So uh, that's a huge number uh, in a single data structure and leads to a huge overhead of the data community troublings. And also, um, the state of the beacon chain won't be um, as large as the is one EBN state, but um, it's still maybe messy to handling a huge uh, single validator list. So the caching manager might be um, very important here. And the second thing is the um, network propagation and traveling. So as I said, that um, there will be many different types of the transactions, but not every uh, thing you need to everyone to know. Some message are only have to be known by some a group of people. Some message are only needs to be stay in the structure level. So um, that case, which means that uh, we have to build um, uh, like. 1,000 subnets for each chain. So uh, imagine that there will be 1,024 1, shard networks. Then I know validators. I have to shovel between those um, networks. That costs um, a lot of the overhead too. And the last thing is the BOS signature aggregations. So, um, we expected that the minimum uh, validator size, uh, sorry, the minimum uh, community size is 128 validators. But if it's the worst case with uh, 4 million uh, validators, it will lead to um, uh, 65,000 individual signatures per second. So imagine that uh, how one client on the laptop handle that. Uh, you can't, so we need to aggregate the signature in the shard chain labels. So um, in the best case, the for each block, the validators only have to 
um, handle the attestations that already been aggregated by the uh, by each shard chain. Uh, by each shard chain networks. Um, if you want to see more, and you can see that link for more information of the BLS signature aggregation. So, um, so everything I I'm talking about is happening right now. There's a very active uh, implementation and research on the is 2.0 specs of Ethereum um, repository. And also we have the community call every um, two weeks on the is 2.0 PM. And important thing is that we have like more than nine uh, teams are building their beacon chain client based on the spec. Yeah, and um, you can see the link to from what, what are those nine teams. And today we have uh, not just me, there are other client implementers. I've seen that, did you wave? <laughs> no? Portal. Hi, Porto. Oscar, Oscar. Hi. Okay. So, yeah, if you are interested in, uh, in the client presentation, you can also reach them out. Oh, and um, myself, I'm working on uh, the research team. We are working on the Python implementation for its tool. So, um, I'm here happy to talk if you want to contribute to Trinity. Or you can find me on the Gitter. Okay, that's thanks to the slide reviewers, the V Buterin, the Danny, Ryan, and Photo Lambda here. And that's thank you. <laughs> <laughs>